morning to all of you and welcome. It's an unusual morning for us. Uh, Christy, our musician, is not here. She was not feeling well when Irene checked her out this morning and she's on the way to the hospital. So we'll pray for Christy. Uh, we're going to sing three a cappella hymns this morning. Diane's going to make sure we're on pitch. Um, but welcome to you and welcome to those of you that are watching on Zoom this morning. We welcome you also. Um, I can't make the sound of the or pipe organ, so we're going to start back there and uh, then we will sing the hymn. But opening hymn is hymn number 551. 551. Rise up, okay. Rise up, these saints of God. Hymn number 551. Rise up, ye saints of God, have come with lesser things. My heart and my soul and mind and strength to serve the King of kings.
Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. A reading from Judges. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Elu died. So the Lord sold him to the hand of King Jezbe of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sister, who lived in Herothita Gom. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had 900 chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites truly 20 years at that time. Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Lapida, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ram and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abinah, from Kishta to Nephal, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, go take position at Mount Tabor, bringing 10,000 from the time of Nephel and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out sisters, the general of I, Jabu, to meet you by the well, Kishron, with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Pray Psalm 123 responsibly, dividing at the half verse. The psalm is printed in the bulletin insert. To you I lift up my eyes. To you as the eyes of the servants look to the hand of their masters. The eyes of the so our eyes look to the Lord our God. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy. For we have had more than enough of contempt. Too much of the scorn of the indolent rich. And of the riches of the proud. The second reading comes from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day, <coughs> for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all the children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober for those who sleep at night and those who are drunk get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, 
and for our helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. So that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to God's people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The gradual hymns, number 680, will God our help in nature's path. We ought to be able to sing that one really well. Okay? Diane, will you start us off? Have an abundance, 
but from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. For as for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm remembering how uncomfortable those masks are. Uh, just as a word uh, to all of you, we've had quite a few, uh, quite a number of COVID cases in the parish, and so we are taking precautions. Um, you're welcome to wear a mask or not to wear a mask. It's up to you. I told uh, several people that I've had my flu and COVID shot uh, two weeks ago now. But we had uh, several people here in the parish last Sunday in the midst of all the celebrations with COVID. So uh, you should be checking yourself and maybe giving yourself a COVID test if you haven't done that already, just to be reassured. Okay? Thank you. Jesus' parable of the talents is one of those stories everybody knows, even if we don't know very much of the Bible. It's part of a scripture that's embedded in our culture and our folklore, somewhat like the parable of the Good Samaritan. You don't even have to be a Christian to know Jesus' story about the three servants whose master gave them his money to manage. In fact, this parable became internalized in our culture so long ago that it loaned our own language, the word talent itself. Look at the story for a moment. An obviously very rich man goes away on a long journey and gives three of his highest ranking servants, managers, if you will, some money to invest on his behalf. According to Jesus' story, the man gave one servant five talents to invest, another two, and another one. A talent was a was a measurement or unit of weight of anything really, iron, copper, bronze, silver, or gold. The most common monetary reference was to a talent of silver in the Bible, and that's probably what Jesus had in mind here. A single talent of silver, a single talent of silver was the equivalent of about 16 years wages for an ordinary worker, 16 years wages. In other words, a lot of money. So the rich man gave his servants some serious money to work with while he was gone. When the master returned from his journey, probably years later, he called in the three servants and asked them to report on what they had done with the money entrusted to them. The first two, the five man talent, or sorry, the five talent man and the two talent man, had doubled their money. Obviously, they had to take some risks in order to make 100% profit. Investing was no more of a sure thing in AD 29 than it was in AD 2023. The master praised and rewarded the two. He told them how happy he was with them. It looks as if the master let them keep all that they had gained for him, both the principal and the interest. But the one talent man hadn't made a penny for the boss. This was not good, not good at all. What had he been thinking? He knew what kind of a man he worked for. He said, he, a man who expected to reap what he had not sowed, but that seems to have scared him so much so that he became unwilling to take chances of any kind. He just dug a hole and buried the money. Of course, he took a chance that the boss might feel sorry for him and let him off the hook. Maybe he'd get to keep the money. 
But in that respect, he made a huge mistake. He was left in the end with nothing at all. Now, Jesus didn't tell this story to encourage investors to take risks. He wasn't addressing himself to estate managers and high-ranking workers, offering a kind of first century business school to case study. Jesus had another point, of course, and it was naturally a spiritual point. And we might sum it up this way. Jesus is looking for spiritual entrepreneurs. Luke records a saying of Jesus that I think fits very well here. Jesus says, from everyone to whom much has been given, much will be expected. And from the one to whom much has been entrusted, even more will be expected. Jesus has entrusted us with the truth of the gospel. He has endowed us with the gift of faith. These are treasures of unbelievable worth. Along with these assets, God has given each of us a range of innate abilities and skills, each one of us. And on top of those, God has blessed us with spiritual gifts. And no two people are exactly alike. Some people are more gifted than others, but each person has some. And those who might think of themselves as being like the one talent man must recognize that even he had been given a great treasure to invest in that one talent. The reality is that God has been very generous to all of us. God is looking for spiritual entrepreneurs. He has entrusted much to us. And it's pretty clear that he's expecting a lot in return. This parable is not just about the stewardship of money. It's more about the stewardship of the good news of Jesus Christ. It asks, what are you going to do with your faith? Are you going to just sit on it, bury it in a hole in the ground? What are you afraid of? Are some questions. This parable also tells us that ultimately there will be a day of reckoning. <clears throat> the master returned from his long journey and ordered an accounting from his servants. What had they achieved with the great wealth that had been entrusted to them? Kind of a harsh, tough message, isn't it? We're making a big mistake, as big as a mistake of the one talent man in a parable, if we imagine that God is not expecting us to do something with the faith and spiritual gifts that he has entrusted to us. One parable obviously teaches us that God is not looking for a no runs, no hits, no errors kind of life. God gives us some wonderful gifts, money, time, talent, and other things as well. We are blessed. God wants us to use those gifts to give glory to God, to use those gifts to make the world a better place, to use those gifts to help our neighbor. Jesus paints a marvelous picture of our future if we will do those things. If we do those things, we won't have to be concerned at all about the day of reckoning. As we look forward in the coming weeks, incredibly, we are looking at the last two weeks of Pentecost right now, just two weeks away from Advent and the beginnings of a new church year. So as we look forward, think about how this parable challenges you through these simple questions. First, what did God give you? We know that we all have some money and we all have time, depends on how we manage it, of course. And we all have talents, at least some. So what did God give you? The second question is this. What are you doing with those gifts? What are you doing to honor God? What are you doing to help other people? And third question is, what could you be doing? And what should you be doing? Think about those questions in the coming weeks, maybe carry them right into Advent as a way to help shape that holy time of expectation and preparation for a Christ coming to us, for Christ coming to you. The answers to the questions will tell you a great deal about your relationship to God, about your love for God, about your Christian discipleship. 
And those questions have the potential to point your life in a whole new direction so that you can become a blessing to others so that you can truly experience God's blessings yourself. Amen. Amen. We continue now with the Nicene Creed in your booklets on page four in your We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, and ever and ever, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God of my faith, the one being of the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, and he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under the conscious pilot. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people, form three found in your booklet. The prayers of the people can be found on page five. The Catholic Church, as we all know, grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Jennifer, our bishop, Father Bob, our priest, for our companion diocese, Lord and Sedan, and their bishop Reuben, Rosalia, and their bishop Mauricio. We pray for the people of Haiti and their bishop Zache. In our name of cycle prayer, we pray for the church of the province of Myanmar, Burma. We pray for Grace Church Muncie, the Reverend Paul Jacobs, all the baptized and all bishops, priests, and deacons. And they may be faithful ministers of the Lord and sacraments. We pray for Joe, our president, Eric, our governor, Thomas, our mayor, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who are hospitalized, including our dear Christie, who is just taken by ambulance. We pray for those in convalescent centers or at home. Bill Ashley, Susan Duco, Bonnie Conover, Sonia Hurley, Cannon McPherson, and Mike Cannon. We pray for our men and women in the armed forces. Ethan Loesch, Audrey McMillan Cole, Reed Rassler, Travis Reed, Zach Webb, and Allison Woodruff. We pray for those who are homeless, unemployed or underemployed, and all those who suffer from any grief or trouble. And they may be delivered from their success. Give to all the departed eternal rest. Let life perpetual shine on. 
We give thanks for the helpful flowers today given by Mrs. Sherry Ballinger in loving memory of Kenny Ballinger's birthday on November the 11th. By Mrs. June Allen in loving memory of the birthdays of Arnie Boots and Paul Allen. We praise you for all your saints who have entered into joy. We pray for those on our daily prayer list, Beverly Mills and Phyllis Norris. We pray for those who celebrate birthdays or anniversaries this week, including Pat Long. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, including those on our printed prayer list, either silently or loud. For Christy, for Bruce Gray, for Holy Family. For my cousin Posey, facing treatment for cancer. Hasten, O oh Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. 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 Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and God heard in thee. I want to be done, and I want to be done. 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 Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also in peace. Peace. Please be seated for just a moment. There's lots of things I need help with in the parish. One of those is uh, keeping in touch with our shut-ins, those who are in nursing homes, at their, in their own homes. Um, I've been in touch with Diane and lots of people who have given me tips on those who need a visit. I want you to know that uh, Candy and Sonia are regulars on my list, and I did see Susan Bukoff this week. So those are the three sort of on the top of my list. But if there are others that you are aware of that need a visit, please let me know during the week. Okay. I want to wish you all a wonderful Thanksgiving. I'm flying to California tomorrow to have Thanksgiving with my sister Jenny and my brother-in-law Rob and niece Emily in uh, Southern California. I haven't been there for three years for COVID and knee surgery and other things, but we're uh, excited to go back. So we're being careful with masks. Um, I'm, I'm aware there's, there's a lot of COVID and a lot of illness around all of a sudden. So just stay well, get, take good care of yourselves, get the vaccinations if you desire to do that for yourself and, uh, and be well. Any other announcements? Right, I got one. Okay. I'd like to call everybody's attention to the fact that this is the time of year when we make our pledges to God and work. We need it as much as we can get, of course. But the envelopes are in the parish hall for you to pick up and fill out. You can fill them out and leave them in the basket where they are or get them to uh, any member of the vestry uh, in the coming week. We do need to create our budget and we try to have our budget so we can vote on it in November, but it's we're pushing it. So if you could get those filled out, we'd appreciate it. 
Thank you. Thank you. Also, they're starting on the furnace Monday. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I've got uh, two announcements. Real, real loud, please. Real I've loud. got two announcements. Uh, the first, Winterfest is coming December the 1st, and we need people to sign up to make cookies and scones. Uh, I know other people are doing other things for the Winterfest, but uh, we really do need the cookies and scones. There is a sign up sheet in the parish hall if you would like to sign up. Uh, also, we're going to Red Lobster for our Opus on December the 12th. Sign up sheets in the parish hall. If you can go or want to go, please sign up. Thank you. Any other announcements? Please remember Christy in your prayers. We, I, I saw her on her porch with seven paramedics gathered around her. And I think they made the determination to take her into the hospital and check that. So we hope she's going to be fine. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts. Janet, could you bring some water to the altar, please? Thank you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Amen.
We continue with the great Thanksgiving and Eucharistic prayer B in your booklets. And I think we're going to sing it. Love the Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, for by Father and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. <coughs> holy, 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 God of our mind, heaven and earth uphold your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we await his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacraments of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever.
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. <clears throat> These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Holy gifts for holy people. Father Christ, the cup is on Father Christ, the cup is on Body of Christ, the Lord of 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 Body of Christ.
the post-communion prayer on the bottom of page 13 in your booklets. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of the Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ as our Lord. In him, to you, and the Holy Spirit, we are glory, Peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 541. 541, Come Labor On. And I hope you all are familiar with this one. I actually know it. <laughs> Diane, will you start us? Okay. Come